So, Adult Sunday School, we're going through uh, distinctions of this local church, distinct doctrines um, that are very important, that aren't necessarily salvation pending, although some will be, we'll talk about. So, a couple weeks ago, we watched the debate about the oneness of God, how God is altogether one, not three persons. That's a very important distinction. James talked last week about the reprobate doctrine, very important distinction of this church that uh, not everybody uh, understands, agrees with, uh, but it's in the Bible. Um, a couple weeks before that, we talked about not born sinners. Once again, a very dis distinct thing that, that's not salvation pending, but it's very important that it will mess up your evangelism, it will mess up your raising of kids, it will mess up your discipleship if you think everybody's born a sinner. So these are super important things. Um, and the one today is very, very important. It's very, very high on the list. Go to um, Isaiah 33. And um, I'm excited because I have a handout today. You're going to have some fill in the blanks. You're going to read some scriptures. We're going to have, um, you know, a time of, of, of uh, teaching. And like I said, I don't know if this series is going to go four weeks or six weeks. But we're going we're gonna to cover... Um, things that we hold very dear in our heart in this church that are very important doctrines. Isaiah 33, say amen when you're there. Amen. amen. Verse 22. For the Lord is our judge, the Lord is our lawgiver, the Lord is our king, he will save us. So you can flip over your hand over now. And today is the basics of theonomy. We are a theocratic church. We believe in theonomy, and that is God's law. We're going to cover some basics. It might be review for some of you. It might be new, and that's why we can do Q&A and everything like that. Definition. Oh, let's read Matthew 5 now. So we have our Old Testament scripture foundation. God's our judge. That's civil judge. Jesus is our lawgiver. We are only administrators, and he is our king. He's king of kings. Now, uh, Matthew 5, everybody knows this, but... I'll just read it whether you get there or not. 17 to 19, Jesus said, Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy but to fulfill. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. Verse 19, Whosoever therefore shall break one of the least of these commandments and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. And so kind of a foundation, like not on your notes here, is that um, there is no neutral law system. So if God's law is not ruling, then that means baby killers, homo's laws are ruling, Muslim Sharia laws are ruling, something else is ruling. There's going to be, there's no vacuum. Somebody's going to lead that family. Somebody's going to lead the church, and somebody's going to lead the civil government. There's no vacuum. So, so, so this is a very important concept so we can't just have escape mentality like the Amish. Uh, here's a definition I wrote down. Theonomy. God's law for all of life, not just civil law. Okay, we talk a lot about civil law, and the Bible does say murderers, kidnappers should be executed. Okay, But, you know, there are some sins that do not have a civil penalty. There is no civil penalty on envy, on jealousy. There's civil penalty on adultery and covetousness and stealing, and there's civil penalties that come in. But there are some sins, and I don't know if it's more than 50%, but there are a lot of sins I can think of that literally do not have a civil penalty under God's law. And there's the difference between iniquity and sin. Iniquity is in the heart. Sin is the actual action, the transgression of doing that thing. So there are definitely hardcore penalties. People get whooped, people paying back restitution, people getting put to death, but not all sin has that. What does that mean? That means not everything can be legislated. That means everything cannot be legislated, but their actions surely can be punished. And that's the, the purpose of government, is to be the sword on the evildoer, terror to the evildoer. So, um, question I wrote, what other areas of life need to be filtered through God besides civil criminal law? Yes. The, uh, family? Fa families, family. Yeah, God, God, there is a theocratic way to run a family. What else? Yes. Uh, education. Education. 
Yes. Should the state be over the kids, or do the parents are over the kids? Or is the church over the kids? The answer is the parents. Well, give me another one. Uh, there's lots. How are you play? How do kids play with each other? That's under God's law. How about doctors and pharmacia? That's under God's law. How about economics and whether we can print money all day long? Or is, should, be, should it be the gold standard? Yes, it should be the gold standard. Economic laws, education laws, criminal laws, ecclesiastical laws. Mm -hmm. how, how should, how, God has a system of how things should flow. And so it's, it's, we, we kind of focus quite a bit on the criminal side because they're wild and they're everywhere. And we do preach homos need to be put to death by the government. That is Bible. But that is 1% of the enemy. Should men have hair that goes down to the middle of their back? No. Why not? The enemy. Should women have a, a, a we use this in uh, our Bible study. Uh, should women have a skirt that has a slit? Uh, it's a big skirt. It's a wide skirt. It's not even purple or red. But it has a slit that comes all the way up mid-thigh. No. That, why not? Because of the enemy. We print money all day long. Should we have central banks? No. Should Jews be allowed to own banks? No, they're not Christians. Not unless they're a Jew for Jesus in the local church, submitted to the local church. If a guy gets excommunicated, can he still be a cop? No. Can he still own a bank? No. Can he still be a doctor that su subscribes uh, surgery medicine for surgery time? They got to knock somebody out, you know, the tons tonsils take out or whatever, certain things. No. I can't have heathen in charge of drugs, in charge of banks. So all of life. So I want you to think bigger about the enemy. This is a basic thing. It's, a, it's more than civil criminal penalties. Okay, it is more than that. Okay, the opposite would be autonomy. Autonomy is the law of man. Autonomous. Okay, theo means the Greek word for God. Autonomy is law. Autonomy, man's law. Autonomous. I do my own thing. You do your own thing. So do men have any true authority outside of God? No. Keyword is true authority. Sure, Caesar could kill people, but God killed Caesar and threw him in hell. So they don't have any true authority. They really, truly don't. Okay? Biden is not in charge. Jesus is in charge. He's our king. And so if men don't have true authority, then we need to do the definition of anarchy. Anarchy is a state of disorder. This is from Webster Dictionary. A state of disorder due to absence or non-recognition of authority. So it becomes a state of dis dis disorder. Even in, even in communism, Russia, they have a huge black market. <laughs> okay, the guy lives on the street, they're going to beat him and throw him in jail five years, but they can't stop all this other disorder going on and the internal coups that happen between the different communist parties within there, you know. Um, since men have zero true authority outside of God, then in reality, all the autonomous law systems, democracy, Sharia law, okay, are in fact anarchist law systems. They are anarchist law systems because they have no true authority. And this equals why they all self-destruct over time. Roman Empire fell. British Empire fell. This one fell. The ones that are more theocratic and maybe more consistent with their pushdowns, like Islam, may last longer. 1,400 years now they've been going. But many of the democracies only last 250 years. 350 years, they're gone. Okay? And, um, and so anarchy is, is humanism. Now, this also manifests itself as statism. Excuse my spelling here in the first part. Statism is the will of collective men. All the men in Greece say you should not be allowed to homeschool. It's the collective law of the land. All the ones in Denmark say you should execute old people that, you know, um, the government doesn't want to pay their uh, health care bill anymore, so just kill them, poison them. So that's statism. Statism has been dominant since the Tower of Babel. It wasn't about building a tower in the, th in the wilderness. It was about building a statism, law system with man being superior. Um, and so since the unsaved are double-minded and unstable, their collective will changes. Their collective will changes. Their laws change. Give me some examples of American laws that, that have 100% flip flopped. Slavery. Slavery. That was the law of the land. Blacks could own white Irish people. A lot of white Irish slaves. And whites could own black people. A lot of that too. 
And I'm sure some people own some Native Americans, and I know some savages own some whites and blacks when they captured them, and they raped them for uh, three years straight. So, so, you know, but the law of the Supreme Court of America said slavery was okay. And there's another one, and other girls just wrote a book about this. I had you write, do a write-up on it. What was, what was that law called? The Fugitive Slave Law. And what was that, Kaziah? Um, where they could, well, they changed it that slaves had to go all the way to Canada instead of just in... The, the American government actually said go to Canada? No. No, they didn't. Um, what was the law of the land? If a fugitive slave ran away from the south and went up to Pennsylvania, what, would, what was the law? So they changed... What the federal government said? No, the, the federal government said, no, you can't choose. The federal government over, overrode the Pennsylvania abolitionists that said, let them choose. And they said, no, no, no. The bounty hunters from the South, you think a car repo guy is aggressive. The bounty hunters from the South come up to Philly and literally knock on the door and say, we heard you have a slave in here. We're going to come in here and search it. No warrant. It already was a Congress law. You had to open your doors up. The sheriff's out there. He's like, hey, my hands are tied. It's the law. They go in there, ransack their house, they can't destroy it. Look through it. They find the slave, you helping that guy escape, you go in the jail. Six months, 12 months, whatever. Wisconsin was the only state that stood up against it, which is a great historical thing. They straight up stood against the federal government, sheriffs with guns, everything, no, kicked the bounty hunters out, everything. And the federal government's like, oh, we're not sending troops to Wisconsin. <laughs> we're not, we're not going to go to war over, over, over this. So the law is only strong enough as the enforcement. Your word in your house toward your kids is only as strong as your enforcement. Otherwise, it's a weak word. A, 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 a church is only as strong as enforcement. Some people need to get excommunicated now and then. Okay? Um, and, so, and so the government has flip-flopped on many, many laws. I mean, if for bad as the savages are and all that, uh, we were Indian givers. We said, we're going to give you guys, um, you know, the, I think it was before they, we moved them all to Oklahoma, it was like, Missouri or some other state, we gave them like literally like 300 square miles. It's called the Blood of Tears, and then they, they, they're like, lose. Oh, well, actually, we, we found oil now. I mean, I want to move to Oklahoma. You guys literally had a signed contract from the president, Supreme Court, and everybody just just turned it over. They have covenant breakers, and so there are many, many laws that have been flip flopped because statism is humanism, is anarchism, is double mindedness. Okay, it absolutely is double double mindedness. Jesus is the civil king of all. A throne without a kingdom is not really a throne. A throne with a king that is not really all powerful. Okay? So there's a king above a king. Who's the real king? The one higher. <laughs> Joseph was in charge of the granaries, this, that, bossing people around. But who was above him? Okay. The state. Pharaoh. The state. Daniel was way up there, man. He was the top guy. Who was above Nebuchadnezzar. Okay, and so uh, the question, easy one, this is for the kids, um, is God in charge or not? He is. He is in charge. Can God kill Joe Biden anytime he wants? He is, yes. Uh, yeah, he can, and he will. In fact, he will kill Joe Biden when he wants to. Yeah, I hope it's while he's president, in the middle of a speech. So law is inescapable. All humans have some type of, there's the blank. Got your pen? Get your pen there, Caden. Write the word faith. All humans have some type of faith. You live your faith. Baby killers live their faith. Antifa lives their faith. Gangsters and drug dealers live their faith. Statists and control freaks and Nazis live their faith. This law is inescapable. Everyone has a type of faith. And when that faith is lived out, it is called religion. Mm -hmm. There is pure and undefiled religion, and there is satanic religion. It is called religion. Religion is walking out your faith. The homos are religious. They walk out their faith, and they say, everybody needs to celebrate our lifestyle. <coughs> you know, not just tolerate, celebrate. 
And if not, we're going to put, we're going to put sanctions on you. So all law is religious by nature. That's a very important thing. Every civil law system is religious by nature. So it's their faith being lived out to the practical end, either killing babies by law or we execute murderers by law. The religion or the faith is being played out. So you want a shortcut? You would write faith equals law. <laughs> okay? They're going to they're gonna play their faith out, and that is their law system. And, uh, and that's what they're going to do. So here's some safeguards with theonomy because we, we get lied about and hammered and this and that. And these are important safeguards because God's law brings liberty, brings freedom. First is that there are three separate ordained institutions, the church, the state, and the family. They are God-ordained. God has ordained these institutions. Each has its own powers, and each has its own limits. Y'all give me some examples of uh, powers of each of these three and limitations of each of these three. Church can excommunicate. Yep. Um, but it cannot do civil punishment. Death penalties. Death penalties. Yes. Yeah, um, I can't shoot people. Yeah. Um, and the, the family as well has sanctions. Could Father can spank the kid, but the church can't tell the father how to discipline his kids. And, yeah. And, you know. I mean, if you're beating them in the face, I would start yeah. <laughs> yeah. or something. Yeah. But yeah, in, in general. And, and so the, can the cops spank the kid? No. Are some handcuffs a little tight? Yeah. Oh. Sounds to me like that's, that'd be child abuse from the state. The state abuses kids all the time. All right. Uh, what other power do these groups have? Or what other limitations do they have? What can the state not do according to God's law? Yes. They can't um, be over the church and excommunicate somebody from there. Or tell the church to close down in COVID. Right. They can do that over their authority. Even our wicked Supreme Court who has like half the stuff 90% wrong overruled California and New York City for COVID because the very few pastors that sued and even they were like, well, yeah, that was an overreach. You know? <laughs> you know? They, 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 they knew that they're, they're well, where do you think they came up with three branches of government? President, Supreme Court, and Congress? They came up with that from the Bible. Separation of powers. Because all power concentrated one thing is Total and uh, tyranny. Do you guys even know the last war that Congress penned and actually made legal? World War II. Not Vietnam War, not Korea War, not Iraq War. That's just president says, oh, so we got to do it. We got to make an action. We got to do this and just sign the paper. So the power has really been concentrated. So the judges have been pushed back, and that's why sometimes they do legislate by the bench. It's a flawed system. America's jacked up, but they had a few... <coughs> concept foundational things somewhat right that they were working through limitations on the family is they cannot excommunicate and the family can't just serve communion mm -hmm. if they're serving communion that implies the power to excommunicate now you can kick a kid out of your family out of your house but if both are claiming and the 17 year old boy and the 35 year old man are claiming to be god followers and christ followers and tithers and preaching out there, and all of a sudden, one of them's kicking one out, or everything else, the pastor's got to say, what is really going on? Somebody's right and somebody's wrong. I'm, you don't have power to excommunicate them. I'm the one that's going to make that judgment call, and I'm going to get to the bottom of it, and then I'm going to diligently inquire. You know? And so uh, the, the, the family uh, is, is not supreme. The state is not supreme. The church is not supreme. But there is a big difference. Under theonomy, only church men can hold civil office. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you have a baby killing cop. You have a homo president. You have a homo Supreme Court judge. You have a feminist woman Supreme Court judge. And so, page two. Ah, here's my extra one. You go get it after your wife, or have her take it. My, mine were doubled up. Uh, okay, page two. Second uh, safeguard. Um, we are only administrators of God's law, not legislators. So the cop or the judge is an administrator. You guys have dealt with administrators uh, in school before. They're like, I don't set the rules. I'm just an administrator. What does the cop say? I'm just doing my job. You'll get to stand before the judge later. I'm just an administrator of the law that somebody wrote. 
you know, it was a funny YouTube I saw a while back. It says cop pulls over like state senator uh, for expired tickets. And he's like, I'm the state senator. He's like, yeah, but your tags are expired and we have to impound your car. Like straight up taking it. He's like, what? He's like, that's it. He goes, hey, I'm just making the law. He goes, you're the one that writes them. <laughs> it's the funniest for the view camera. And the guy's like, calling and this and that. He's, he's like, and he's like, oh, okay, well, I'm going to get that law changed. <laughs> you know? And I'm sure he is now that it affected him personally. And so this is a huge safeguard. The pastor is only an administrator of ecclesiastical law and the enforcement of only Christian judges and cops. The cop cannot go beyond and do 41 lashes on somebody. The judge cannot do it. 40 lashes is max. Can't do 41. You can't put somebody to death for um, a non-death penalty thing. Then the pastor has to step in. They, you know, they're, they're, administration is a very powerful safeguard, and it really is like railings. It's like these like safety railings to stop tyranny at every level. You should you should love. The heathen should love, like, this is one of our main points after World War III when we're preaching God's law. It's like, listen, no one can add or take away from this word, and no one's above it. Not the cop, not the judge, not the deacon, not the pastor. No one is above this. Administrators, administrators, administrators. Hey, the problem's not with me that your son's a little faggot going to get stoned tonight at 5 p.m. when guys get off work. No night jobs. Man. Guys get off work. Of all the men, where is daddy's going to get stoned. Don't get mad at anybody. We're all just administering God's law. And the only mad anybody, maybe you should have whooped him for having a limp wrist when he was 10 years old. Maybe, maybe that's what should have happened. The first time he's like, no, I don't want to pass out with the boys. I want to cook with mom. <laughs> Spanking. <laughs> I don't know if that's age 10 or 12. Or, I don't know if it adds up to the dad. But I know it when I see it. <laughs> okay. Administrators is a great safeguard. Another definition. Theonomy. Dominionizing for God and his law. Now, do we need people to translate the Bible into other languages? So, I mean, we need the missionary to go preach in the Amazon and over and out. But once they like say, yeah, I accept Jesus, I repent of my sin and my cannibalism, now what? And you're like, oh, here's an English Bible. Do we need somebody to translate Bibles? We do. Yeah. We do need people to translate Bibles. I'm trying to get you to think bigger than just stoning homos. Theonomy is dominionizing for God's law. Yes, we need people to translate the Bible. That person is a theonomist. He might not understand all the implications of it. He might disagree on some things. But he is helping dominionize for God and his law. He is part of the cog. Part of the wheel of the big cog. Somebody, his name's William Tyndale, translated the Latin Vulgate Bible into English for us. Thank you, William Tyndale. Mm -hmm. Theonomists do, what's the blank there? Not. Do not need to agree on everything. I think reprobate doctrine is very important. I think not being born sinners is very important. Will I work with a theonomist that also wants to stone adulterers, murderers, kidnappers, and homeless? Yeah, I'll work. We, we as a church, will work with them. We will not divide on those things. They probably will divide from us because they're not saved and people don't like the saved and the salt and the rub of the salt in the wound and saying, I told you so and maybe my rude style, but though I be rude in speech, I'm not a knowledge. <laughs> I can give them this all day long and stuff. But we don't have to agree on everything as far as the other theonomists are out there. Most of them are Calvinists. I totally disagree with Calvinism. But most of them are Calvinists. And so what they must agree on is that the Bible law is above their opinion or above the uh, church's tradition. So our, here's our, I put it in bold, our local church main foundation for theonomy, only Christian men in the local church can be in civil leadership. We will fight for this issue over all the other issues after World War III, and we will push this foundation, and we will push this foundation again and again and again, even if it meant we had 20 square miles and the Baptists are not agreeing on this and they have 20 of the numbers and 20 of the guns, I'd be like, fine, we're building the wall. That's your country. You'll see in 15 years how downhill it goes because that's exactly what the Puritans did, which is why we lost America. Mm -hmm. The very first thing they got off of God's law was letting other people vote that weren't Christians. Yeah. The second thing was getting rid of the Sabbath law. Then after
after that, no more executing homos, lock them up. But then after that, and it went downhill from there. So the foundation, I've traced it, and it's biblical. The foundation is letting Chuck not trace, but the, he's my boss. He ain't gonna be your boss forever. Eventually, he's gonna probably get stolen for adultery. You're gonna have a business, but he's my this. But this one, this one married my daughter and backslid. And he used to vote in the church until pastor excommunicated. Why? If you don't stand on this foundation of I'm dead men, then, then you will have some weirdo ruling over you in 20 years. The democracy will creep back in. This is our main distinction. This is the hill I will die on. This, th listen, I love the gold standard. I don't think we should just print up money. I'd rather have this and still print money if I had to pick between the two and some compromise and all that. Okay, not that we should do that. We should follow. I love all 33 death penalties, but if we can only start with 20, because the other people aren't there yet, and all they understand is murders and rapists and homos are put to them. We're not backing off on the homos and murders and rapists. But they're like, well, I don't know about the blood drinker. Well, I don't, I don't know about the guy doing this or that or whatever. And say, so, okay, we're getting there. We're getting somewhere. We'll see who so shows up to the stoning pit. This is a must. This is a hill to die on. So, you know, and uh, sometimes there may be slow implementation on the death penalties until more, more people, you know, get understand theonomy. And so... This is the foundation. This is the crux. This is the, the, the root of it. Okay, next question. Do we have responsibility to the minimize? Yes. Yes. And what happens if we don't? Go to Matthew 5.13. Actually, you should be there already. Go just up a little bit. James, read that. Ye are the salt of the earth, but if the salt have lost his savor, where, what, wherewith shall it be salted? It is this for, thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden under foot of men. So what happens if we don't dominionize? Someone's going to someone's gonna rise up. And do what to us? Uh, grind us down. Grind us down. It's persecution or dominion. Mm -hmm. This is why the street preaching is such trained for theonomy. Because when it comes up strong like that, then I come up strong to them like that. And I'm like, if you're going to just swing, man, just hurry up and do it. You know, I've already told you're going to help. Or the cop, and I'm arguing this and that, and I'm like, all right, we're done arguing. I'm doing free speech. You are being a tyrant. Are you going to arrest me or not because I'm going to preach? I need to turn and preach to these sinners that want to hear the message. You make your choice. And then I turn my back on cops and start preaching, and they're like, they're not used to that. And I'm like, oh, what's called the sergeant? Or they just cuff me. It's like, just speed this thing up. Somebody's going to win the battle. Somebody's going to do there, and if not... Then, then you're going to be trodden under foot of men. And you know what else? Jesus says you deserve it. Mm -hmm. They deserve it. Canada deserves everything that's happened. Other ones deserve it. We keep letting elections get stolen. We deserve all that as America, as all that. I was like, no. And then, yeah, my whole thing is all right, then when it comes martyred, I'm going to be a public martyr. So at least other people can see it, an example of it, how to stand up to a bully. Hello? You know? So, do you want to change the world? Yes. Good. Good answer. Every bell shaking their head. Okay. Well, if so, then politics is fourth. This is a kind of a shocking statement. People don't get this, but I need you to draw three circles. You can draw it on your page there. You can flip it over. I don't really care where you put it. In the middle, write the word me. See, so politics is fourth. Around, around that circle, around the little circle, no, it, it circles inside of circles, sorry, circles inside of circles. Second circle around that is family. If you're not changed, your family's not going to change. If you're not discipled, your family's not going to be discipled. Oh, but I want to change the abortion laws in Pennsylvania. Your family's out of order, why would that be in order? Third is is church. See, the strong men make strong families. The strong families make strong churches. A strong church together is what could stand up to tyranny. Not an individual. Oh, we're going to close down because of COVID. Hi, I'm, I'm Bob, and I say no. Lock them up. No, we are the local church here. We as a church are going to take the Supreme Court. You're going to have to persecute us all publicly as us being the little helpless lambs that we are. Be wise as a serpent, harmless as a dove. You want to look like the bully is just beating you down. 
you want to get the middle on your side. And the, the five out of five out of nine Supreme Court justices said New York and California overextended and should never shut those churches down and awarded hundreds of thousands. I guess one got a million to one church, you know, because they have this they have their big mega church and you know he's like a Korean pastor in Southern California or whatever, and uh, they probably have like forty people on staff and you know paid out the million or whatever. So they got the reimbursed by the state of California. I think it's great. So you want you want to look that way. So the fourth one is politics. Politics would be fourth. So what must we dominionize first? Ourselves. Ourselves. Go to Proverbs 16.32. And this is uh, my wife's turn to read. city these were city states back then that is taking a government for civil authority he that rules his spirit is better than him that makes America a Christian country you can make America a Christian country and then your wife and kids go straight to hell so this this order it comes from internal than outward and it's how the little church with 3,000 people overturned the heathen Roman Empire. Took 350, took 300 years, 350 years, 370 years, and it didn't last real long because then they turned Catholic. But for a while, there was a lot of pastors that became the mayor of the city. Because the emperor was like, we need somebody we can trust. We can trust them. Okay? Uh, you know, and so that would have been a very weird role to be in. <laughs> very weird. I'm glad that wasn't me then. Okay? Uh, I have a little different revelation on Romans 13. <laughs> The pastors became the mayors of a bunch of cities all over Rome. <laughs> the whole thing flipped. And then the that, under Constantine, and then the next one is that you have to be a Christian, and that's when Catholicism came in heavy. Anyways, first dominionizes ourselves. So due to God's law, only then can you lead your family into God's ways and God's law. Uh, so do you see why it's required that a man rule his family in the ways of God before he can be a deacon? Yeah, that's a requirement. Take the pulpit serious. Take the leadership serious. So any man who can't rule his family shows that he can't rule himself. So can those street preachers have a bunch of backslidden kids and feminist wives? Are they ruling themselves? No. Are those pastors who let their women behind their wife behind the pulpit? Are, is he ruling himself? They're anarchists. They're out of control. They're double-minded, and they are amazing speakers. Like, these guys can preach better than me. I admit it. Like, they're just like, they're just like, they're just going to fire up. And it's like, whoa, man, these guys are preaching it and they're hooping and hollering and people are falling over. Sometimes people get healed with cancer, pull out wheels. I've seen it all. You know, they like, can't heal, we're falling over. Words of knowledge. No, those are familiar spirits. Those are words of knowledge. Familiar spirits. These guys are great speakers. They're, they're, like, they're like Apollos and steroids. Anarchists produce anarchist disciples. Statists produce statist disciples. They rule by the majority. They say we the people. They say we're the majority. They say we voted. Blah, blah, blah. Go with it. They legislate. They legislate. They are not administrators because they are the highest laws. So this is why theonomy is not a top-down idea. That's what we're lied about. It's, oh, it's top-down. It's top-down. Well, Cromwell, great revolution in England was bottom up. They had 4% of the population that was hardcore Puritans, and they shook the whole nation, executed the wicked king, and started the Presbyterian Revolution. Presbyterian means ruled by the elders. Okay? And, 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 and I, th th there, there is definitely, elders definitely have a lot of power. Okay? Every pastor is an elder, not every elder is a pastor, but elders have a lot of power. Okay, and I'll get into that later. So we must have a core of men that embrace God's law. And the good news is that it only takes 4% of committed people to dominionize the whole society. How many, uh, what percentage are the faggots in America, they say? Do I say it? Two. Two percent. And some say three percent. And the fags themselves say 10%, which is not true. Because <laughs> I would literally see one out of 10 everywhere I walk, and I don't. I don't see them everywhere I walk in every state I've been in, every city. There's not one out of 10, you blind faggot. 
two or three percent, and look what they've done. Look what they've accomplished. Look at these Muslims switching laws all over here. They're like ten percent, eight percent. Because the liberals are like, oh, we don't want to lose a million votes. Defend the Muslim. It's like four percent. Do you guys know how many um, Hitler had? The Nazi Party. There was like 50, no, twenty-five or thirty parties in Germany after World War One. During nineteen like twenty-nine or nineteen thirty elections, there was there's not two parties, political parties. But guess I'm at four percent is what the Nazis had. They had four percent. That was it. I think they started at two percent, and then they got a little bigger. And then once they got that, then they start taking out enemies. And they go on from there. Now we're not gonna we're not gonna fight. We're not gonna do the tactics of the Sharia law Muslim Takiyah and the Nazis and those different tactics. Uh, are, are and I should have wrote this on here. And this is very important because I'm all for the political power because those with power can protect freedom. Mm -hmm. Why do you want power, Pastor? Because I want to protect freedom. Because I want the three institutions that God ordained um, represented correctly, flowing correctly. It don't make a man a man if you're like, the state won't bill you out. There's no free, no, no free food. <laughs> no, no, the state ain't going to bill you out. He gonna be a, yeah. Okay? It'll make the, 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 the government uh, line up if they know the head judge could be, uh, if he sins, could either one, be executed, or two, kicked out of the church, excommunicated, and then be fired. So the head cop and the head judge isn't just like execution or nothing. It's not zero or 100 miles an hour. No, there, no, it could be something else. You're fired, man. You're out of the church. No more interest-free loans for you. Many advantages in the church. Loans are at 0% interest rate. Loans for the heathen, charge them whatever you want. Compete with each other. Free market. You have two bankers, I don't care. If one of you wants to offer 10%, one offer 15% to the guy, whatever. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. That's not, that's not the, none of the church business. That's none of the state's business besides if they're Christians that are bankers. But to other Christians it's, it, to, that who's in need, it's a zero percent loan. So there's advantages, and then you know they could be a cop and get paid. They could they could the church needs somebody to fix the roads or roofs or whatever. There's a whole flow. But the point the point is that it's not top down. Four percent is all it takes. And uh, let's go to Genesis three five Keziah. You guys learning anything? Yes. It's it's basics. But it's very important that we review these. Oh, that was my point. I'm not fighting like Muslims or Nazis. Um, our primary weapon is the gospel, is preaching and trying to get men's hearts changed and then discipling the men and women that profess Jesus as Lord. That's the primary weapon. The secondary weapon is the sword, is the AR-15, is the nuke. That is the secondary weapon. And it is a secondary weapon that we can and we should be used at times. But the primary weapon, uh, especially after nukes hit America, is um, be a light, trade with people, preach to everybody, everybody preaching, and then use the sword when we need to. You know. And so I'll do later a sermon on war because there is a time where the courts are not running. There's a time that's all about security and uh, Abraham attacked at night to rescue Lot very, what the world would call, very underhanded. Abraham didn't fight fair. He attacked at nighttime. For all we know, they went there and slit a hundred throats and didn't yell. Commanded his men with 318 armed men. They took out a whole army. How'd they do it at night? Don't know and I don't care. I just like the example. I love silencers. I think it's great. Go ahead, read Genesis 3.5. For God did know that Who's talking then? The serpent. The serpent. Who's the serpent? The devil. The devil. Is the devil a truth teller or is the devil a liar? Liar. He's a liar. Good. He's a liar. You shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. So the temptation is to be as gods, knowing good and evil, equals you will be autonomous and you will determine what is lawful and what is not lawful. So I want you to draw a little triangle and write the word God at top. And then below that, you can either draw a bunch of stick figures of men, or you can just write the word men. <laughs> For kids that want to draw, this is your chance to draw in church. Draw a couple stick figures. You got God at the top. God's like, this is right, that is wrong. We got this thing flowing down. There's like these men. Now, 
This is not blasphemous. This is for the point. This is very just just X out God. Just scratch it off completely. Just totally erase it. Scratch it over. Just get a big cloud there. Put a big X there. What do you have left? A bunch of equal men. Equally across. But one of them says, I'm Einstein and I'm a Jewish genius. So I should have more. But one says I invented the iPhone, so I should have more. But one says I'm the most beautiful and all your husbands want me. But one says I'm this and I'm that. One says I'm LeBron James. I can bas dunk a basketball. I can shoot further. You know, the first statist, Tower of Babel guy, was a great hunter. A mighty hunter. The guy who's shooting like 500 yards out, killing stuff. Like just insane hunting abilities. Like ever, all the men respected him so much. And you do see so many good sports. You're like, I used to do snowboard a lot, and I was good. But there's dudes better than me. I was like, whoa, man, I respect that. <laughs> They're all equal. God's gone. No one has authority. No one, no one has any true authority. Democrats don't have true authority. Republicans don't have true authority. The Holy Roman Empire thought they did. They're gone. Alexander the Great conquered half the known world. Thought he did. He gone. He dead. Babylon, eh, eh, none of them. There is no true authority outside of God. There's none outside of God. And so that is the temptation. You will determine what is lawful or not. And this is why it has to be played out in your heart first, because you have to say, I am not a legislator. I am subject to the law of God. I do not determine what's right or wrong. I need to search this matter out. Any questions on that? So there's only two choices. It's not a choice of theocracy or not theocracy. Theocracy is the rule of God's law, civil rule of God's law. But the question is, who's theocracy? Man's theocracy in one of its many forms or God's theocracy? That's the only question. So people have to decide who they want to be ruled by. Page three. Or I don't know, my pages are different. I printed four pages and I took out all your spaces. Whatever, keep going. Another great enemy of dominion is dualism or pietism. Dualism is that there's two of you. They got, you know, your flesh and your spirit. You are two. Well, the Bible says God is one and you're made in God's image. Therefore, you're one. You're not two. Go to 1 Corinthians 6, 17, Sister Rachel. This is this is this is why if you sin there's such agitation in spirit. You're joined to the Lord. You're not two. There's no excuses. Go ahead and read 18. I'm gonna show you that this is another proof that not all sins are equal. Right here, verse 18. Read that, Rachel. Flee fornication. Every sin that a man doeth is without the body, but he that committeth fornication sinneth against his own body. Yeah. So one of the one of the sins is without the body. It's on the outside, and one of them is against his own body. And, you know, Jesus told Pontius Pilate, greater is he that handed me over to you. The greater is the sin of the Jews that handed me to you, Pontius Pilate, uh, than, than your sins. Greater damnation or greater the sin. I'm misquoting it. So there, there, are, there are levels. Felonies, misdemeanors, 40 lashes, death penalty. You know, different, different things there. And so the point is, dualism and pietism, we need to attack this for a little bit. Um, because it's very prevalent in America today. And the pietism is a form of dualism, uh, which, you, once again, dualism is you're two. You're not two. You're one. Your flesh and your spirit are, are separate. Okay? And so pietism is the spiritual over the physical. Spiritual over the physical. So all the inward examination. It's all this inward examination, heart searching, all this stuff, all this, quote, growing. I put it in quotes. Growing. Spiritual growth, overtaking dominion and seeing God's true justice in the land. And seeing the oppressed set free. So while they're being all spiritual on their three-day retreats and 40-day fast and all-night prayer meetings, a bunch of babies are being slaughtered. Mm -hmm. And no one's at the Planned Parenthood. And no one's trying to vote for at least somewhat far-right Republicans like Doug Mastriano. He lost. But hey, like, at least he said he was going to outlaw abortion. No one's pushing a certain direction. And because, you know, you're too, you're too busy examining your own heart. You're too, you're too busy, you know, growing in your pie. Pietism is for eight-year-olds. True pietism is good. It's for the kids. It's what we're doing in the character studies. We're going through endurance and 
you know, and deferring. And that's called true pietism. That is ABCs of Christianity. Most in America don't even have their ABCs down. They're so jacked up. They're so out there. They're so selfish. But once you get past the ABCs, you can just start like making sentences that are coherent and paragraphs that are coherent and books are and, and flowing in all of theonomy. So the false pietists, they're just, they're just staying down there and it's dualism and it's wrong. And it's what a bunch of Mennonites are. It's what the Amish are. It's a bunch of Pentecostals. It's a bunch of them. And so basically I wrote down, pietists make being spiritual the goal over obedience. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, take dominion. So the pietists deserve to be persecuted. They deserve to be trodden underfoot of men. And when we watch the Voice of the Martyr DVD again, which we will at some point, the hour-long one with about 10 eight-minute stories that'll just rip your heart out, you'll see that half of them is because our pastor is a pietist mm -hmm. and didn't teach them to own guns and shoot back. And it spread throughout nationally. Okay. Um, so theonomy is not anti-grace. That's another one they lie about. It's, oh, you're not being gracious, Pastor. You're not being gracious. No, the opposite of grace is not law. The opposite of grace is gracelessness. Gracelessness. You have, you have no grace. So I wrote all of that. What is the opposite of law? What? Lawlessness. Lawlessness. Amen. Put lawlessness. It's not grace. That's what they're going to tell you. That's what Faggot Cope said behind the pulpit before I kicked him out. Oh, you're putting the law against the grace and the grace against the law. They're equal. The fad gospel is the same as the goat gospel. Mm -hmm. They have different skins. It's the same core. God loves everybody. Law against grace. You're exalting law above grace. How about when um, all these heathen nations, for all Abraham's time, all these times were just total ruled by, like, there was no recourse. Joseph gets sold to slavery, lied about rape, no recourse. Jacob and Laban, Laban rips him off, no recourse. There's no civil recourse. No grace there. And all of a sudden, they get the law on Mount Sinai. Moses brings down the law. The giving of the law is a very gracious thing. Mm -hmm. They then got a whole society that had checks and balances, and the king goes in to offer sacrifice. He gets leprosy. You're not supposed to be in there. You're not a priest. You're not holding all those off. You're not that. That's why if nukes go down, uh, look me in the face. Pastor Aiden only want to be a judge for like a month. Uh, that stuff needs to be separated out. Samuel wasn't trying to do that forever. He killed King Agag. Dude wasn't doing that. No, this stuff separate, separate it out. Mm -hmm. Me being being a civil judge, which I'm willing to do for a very short period of time. Short, it would be like me being the fa the, the, the oh, not the fa the man of the house of your man's house. Like that is not war. That's awkward. That is not fitting. That doesn't work. Like I don't want to be a civil judge. I believe in separation of powers. Well, you gotta have, you can't have a deacon be a judge. You gotta, they gotta be an elder. They gotta be something. That, they gotta be proven. They gotta be there fluid because that's death penalty. So that's on you. Pastor doesn't say if the guy gets whipped one time or forty times. That's up to the judge. I'm not about to step in there and say that. I would never do that. It'd be like him coming up here and trying to interrupt the pulpit preach. No, no, no. You whip them one or forty. You do whatever you want. The Bible has many times it says the judge determined. Other times it says bring the judge and the priest. Tough case. I'll bring pastor in. Let's talk about it. Let's go through it. That's not a problem. Okay? But that's once things are established. Phase one, which is the sermon on just war, is clean, clean the house. There's no court system during the clean house phase. Cromwell's a great example of that. During the time of war, they didn't have not have parliament. Mm -hmm. We'll watch that movie again. You'll learn about Oliver Cromwell. Do you even know who he is? He's the Puritan liberator of England who killed the king of England in the 1600s and was a theonomist. And um, that just changed the whole laws. Mm -hmm. And it's because of him that even though the king later after his death killed his son and rose up, that um, uh, it... it, it that, that the king never had full power ever again. Parliament always had a voice, always had power. The problem is they had heathen in Parliament making laws. Yeah. It wasn't Christians only. Uh, and so anyways, uh, um, he, he was a Puritan. And, and so, uh, moving on. Opposite of law is lawlessness. God's spirit or grace is never against his law. The question is, what side of the law are you on? 
Same law. One law. What side are you on? The laws for against murder are uh, imposed upon the victim as well as the criminal. Somebody murders your daughter. One law system. To him, he's put to death. To you, you're like, this is so gracious. I'm so glad he's stoned the same day. Mm -hmm. We don't have to wait and drag it out and think about it for 12 months and maybe he'll get off. Like, I get to actually help throw the first stone or the witness, whoever the witnesses are there. But you can just go to your buddy witness and be like, hey, that guy killed my daughter. Judge found him guilty. Please just throw a couple little stones, little pebbles. I got this one for him. Bring your 22s to the stoning pit. I'll bring the AR-15. Yeah, it's publicly suffering. Some of these witches were burnt on a stake so they could cry out and yell. So other people weren't inspired to become feminist witches. Let the fear of you be upon them. And so this is Bible. This is real Christianity. The Puritans were breaking the King of England's laws left and right. Okay, th th this has happened in history over and over again when enough Christians rose up. And so, what side of the law are you on? That's the question. What's, it's one law. And the, and the bad guys have one law. They have one law right now. They say, if you preach in front of the Catholic Church and call a priest a pedophile, then we're going to charge you for harassment. And, and so that's this side of the law that you're on, because that law is on their written books. It's there. It's however they want to define it and do it. So it's still one law. So it's, just, it's, a, it's a satanic theocracy law. It's a Bible theocracy law. It's inescapable. What side are you on? And oh, and this is so merciful to the other future victims. Guy kills her daughter. Guy gets stoned. That is gracious to the whole community. Mm -hmm. They can sleep good at night knowing that that dude is dead and in hell. We literally send them to hell. Old Pentecostal joke. I know how to cast out a demon 100%. It's called a stoning pit. Demon can't be in there when the guy's dead. And a lot of Americans haven't felt enough injustice yet. And you think after two elections stolen and COVID locked down, they'd be a little more mad, a little more injustice. No, nope, not enough. Now, they're going to have to get, uh, you know, they're going to have to lose the homeschool right laws. They're going to have to do this. They're going to have to do that. They're going to have to figure out this pietism is trash that their pastor's been teaching them. They're going to they're, they're gonna have to embrace the army. And then the only question is, Lord, teach me to fight lawfully. That's my only prayer. <laughs> I, know, I know it's at war. The, the Lord, you teach me to fight lawfully, according to God's law, not man's law, according to God's law. And there's many examples in the Bible. All right, moving on. God's law is the guide to sanctification, not justification. Justification, memorize this, kids, is right standing with God, heaven when you die. You are justified. Where does justification come from? I'll put a blank there. Somebody answer this. I know my wife has it, but she's staying quiet. Men? Levi, James, where does justification come from? The, well, the law, right? No. Biblically? Yes. Faith in Christ? Faith in Christ, amen. Faith in Christ. Faith in Christ. You sleepy, man. Yeah. Justification comes from the blood of Jesus. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. It doesn't say what can wash away my sins, nothing but the law of God. Okay? This is a foundational thing. This is something we'll be lied about. This is something you must, I would say, tattooed on your forehead, but we're against tattoos. So what are, what are the steps to access the blood of Jesus? What, what, what must you do? Repent. Be baptized. Baptized. Are you good? Give one. Um, go to church? Nope. That's afterwards. Go to churches afterwards. If people get saved in prison, can't go to church for two years. Yes. Okay. Confess Jesus is Lord. Mm -hmm. You repent of your sins, you confess Jesus is Lord, you get water baptized, and then you receive the Spirit of God. But receiving the Spirit of God has nothing to do with you. You don't do anything. You do repent. God unctions you to repent, convicts you to repent. Thank God for that. Thank God for that. That's a gift. Repentance is a gift from God. When he convicts you, it's a, it's a great gift. 
If you put your faith in Jesus Christ who died for you, his blood sanctified, justify you, and then the water is the sealing, it's the death, burial, resurrection of Jesus. You are dying to self. You are being risen with Christ. And it's the blood of Jesus that covers your sins and you receive the Holy Spirit. With that said, if the thief on the cross got a miracle and he lived for another 80 years, would he then be required to live by God's law and walk sanctified? Mm -hmm. Yes. And what would happen if he kept sinning? Go to hell. He'd go to hell. And so Jesus is the door. That's the blood. You come through the door. You are the thief on the cross. You die. <laughs> a heart attack. You did. I'm not on camera. I can, get, I can get dramatic here. You go to heaven. But he didn't do this yet. He didn't cut his ponytail yet. He didn't do that yet. He didn't apologize to his mom for whatever. He didn't do that yet. I know all that. The dude was saved for two hours and he died. Relax. This is before the resurrection. You've got to be baptized. Very important. After resurrection. Then you're walking straight and narrow. Straight and narrow. Straight and narrow. Law. Guardrail. Law. Sanctification. Law. Guardrail. Law. But you got only got in because of the blood of Jesus. Don't ever get confused that you walking the straight and narrow is why you're going to heaven. Because it's not. It's what stops you from going to hell. There's a difference. And people get this messed up, and they're going to go into Judaism, saved by the law, or they're going to go into hyper-grace, do whatever they want when they go through the door. And it is absolutely both. And it's the, but the foundation is the blood of Jesus. And then you are required to walk the straight and narrow. So why do goats, I wrote it down, why do the goats twist our words about sanctification and, and they say you're just trying to be justified by the law why do they do that an excuse because they don't want to be obedient exactly it's an excuse because they don't want to be obedient so they call you a Pharisee they say you're trying to be justified by the law and we say oh no I'm justified by the blood of Jesus I'm sanctified by the law and you're not sanctified because you're not obedient I don't doubt if you maybe got saved once. I don't, I'm, not, I'm not even talking about it. You may have gotten saved. You may have had a great experience. You may have walked straight now for a couple weeks, a couple months, a couple years. But then you got off. And you're going to hell, cousin. And you're going to hell, Aunt Barbara. And you're going to hell, whoever else. And here's the specific sin you're in. Boom. Lay it out. Precepts. Stat lay out their specific sin. And why would I lay it out? Because I want you to repent of that very specific thing. Because the law is a schoolmaster to bring us to Christ. And so these goats twist it because they're goats, and that's what goats do. They always twist Jesus' words. Oh, he came to abolish the law. Oh, no more law. No, that's ceremonial law. I don't have time to get into that on theonomy basics, but you've got to understand ceremonial law is done away with. The civil law and the moral law is here to stay, period. And I would say the cleanliness laws, a lot of them stay. Poop needs to be outside the camp. Okay, uh, no sex on the period. Uh, uh, cleanliness laws are, are, are good. Are they all salvation pending? I don't, I, don't, I don't think they're all necessarily salvation pending. Some of them are, and some are death penalty. There's a lot, there's a lot of ones you got to go through. you gotta, you got to process through this stuff. All right, moving on. More proof. Um, if you miss one Saturday outreach, are you going to hell? No. No. That's right, you're not. And so you can write the word no there. Uh, in the blank. And so the dynamic tension is Revelation 3.16. I'll quote it to you, but go to Ephesians 2.10. The dynamic tension of you're not going to hell for missing outreach is, is Revelation 3.16 says, I'd rather you have you be hot or cold because thou art lukewarm, I shall spew thee from my mouth. Go to Ephesians 2.10. So this is a dynamic tension. God says you cannot be lukewarm. But as we know from the fake street preachers that may go out every Saturday, they are lukewarm, they're not obeying God. So you have to define what is lukewarm, what is cold, what is on fire? I think the guy in China or Iran doing one-on-one -on -one witnessing as often as he can and never street preaching, he's probably more on fire than all of us put together. Because he knows that any time he can be locked up for five years, mm -hmm. hard labor camp, which wouldn't be the hardest part, it'd be away from the wife and kids, would be the hardest part. And he's still willing to risk that and do one-on-ones in Islam country, communist country. That dude's on fire, straight up. You know, that's the fire I want to get to. I want to be, you know, like, and we, we, we do push it, we do. You know, I mean, uh, 
And I mentioned the brothers and sisters in other countries more because there's really not much in America you can compare it, compare it to. Not even current. Uh, who who read last? Uh, Rachel, you already read. All right, JC, Ephesians two ten. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. And and you know you know what a woman's good work is. Uh, Cooking, cleaning, submitting to husband, raising the kids in the fear and the admonition of the Lord. She doesn't fear God. How are the kids going to fear God? Mm -hmm. That's her work. She, she, you know, as a church, we do full church outreaches. As everybody comes out. I want those kids holding abortion as murder sign. I want the women holding women belonging in the kitchen. Absolutely. We're preaching that across the culture of the church to, 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 to do that. But her good work is not the same as a pastor or street preacher good work of going to a, to a Mardi Gras or fad parade or whatever. So there is a level of lukewarmness where you are not walking in the works that God has ordained for you and you will be going to hell. But it's not because you missed one Saturday outreach. It's because you're not walking in the good works God called you to do. So remember laws inescapable in all the sects, including the Amish. The Amish are a sect. And these have a form of godliness, the matter of power there. That's what sects are. That's a branch of Christianity. Some sects are cults, but not all cults are sects. I take that back. All cults are sects, but not all sects are cults. Catholicism is a sect. I call it a cult too, because the real Catholic says if you're not a Catholic, you're going to hell. But the other ones don't, so you, that could be debatable. But the point is, um, all law is inescapable. So they still, even the Amish, still have some sort of law system. And if they had their own country, they would have to decide the punishment for a rapist. Mm -hmm. It's inescapable. Am I right? Would the, would the Amish have to, if they own their own country, which they never would because they're such pussy pacifists, but would they, would they and, and a rape, kidnapping, incest, they had a lot of incest in their group, something happened, would they have to figure out a punishment for that person? Yes. Yes. Law is inescapable. They're either going to excommunicate them, whoop them, pat them on the back, kill them, kick them out the country. They're going to do something. It's inescapable. In every family, in every church, in every civil government, so why in the world would God want any other system ruling? If you say, don't be a theonomist, you're saying God wants faggots and baby killers to rule. There's the brass tacks. That's what it comes down to. Now, in closing here, the only... Uh, this is only the very basics of theonomy. We went through a four-point series on this. I'll do it again in a couple years, and we read theonomy books. Uh, but it is one of the distinctions of this local church, and it is, it is a must. It is, it is more important than reprobate revelation. It is more important than Mount Born Sinner revelation. Uh, it's more important than the next couple ones that we're going to be going through over the next few weeks, which are all very important distinctions of this church. This is one of the main, main ones. And especially because I know for a fact Armageddon's coming. World War III will happen, kids. Mm -hmm. The Bible doesn't lie, and it says we're in the sixth trumpet, the sixth, or not trumpet, vial being poured out. Mm -hmm. At the end of the sixth, it says Armageddon, and it says it will affect the whole world. I have no idea when. Mm -hmm. Might be in 20 years, might be in two years, might be the, I have no idea when. I'm never going to know when. I'm never going to go. I could even get a dream or vision. I still wouldn't preach that I knew when. There, no, there's no way. We'd have to have three separate dreams, visions that are 100% line up that are like, like, you know, with exact everything and not two. I, I, I've already told us, so Lord, you'd have to have three, three separate, like totally ones that it would have to be that. There's no way. And even then I wouldn't preach it on YouTube. I'd be like, oh, that's just a uh, heads up for our church, <laughs> you know? And so the point is Armageddon's coming. So we have to understand these, this, this, the basics of theonomy, embrace it, love it, meditate upon it. Um, and so in light of these COVID restrictions, in light of historicism, why should all real churches be teaching theonomy? Why? I'm asking you guys a question. Um, well, for many reasons. Um, for one, because uh, like the Bible says in Peter, God's not willing to let any perish. And that was when they knew that judgment was coming and Peter was warning everybody to get out. And he knew Jerusalem would be destroyed. He knew Jerusalem would be destroyed. He so, believed the words of Jesus. Right. So it's a, so if you believe the words of Jesus, you'll be yeah. saying the same thing to your congregation and everything yeah. like that. Yeah. Amen. Good. Why else? Why else should real teachers, real 
in, in light of COVID, let's just, in light of COVID restrictions, restrictions, why should real churches teach the army? Yes? Well, it shows if, if it's a real church, because they, you know, they're bound down to the law of the land. Yes. And then they're not a real church. They're not a real church. Yeah. Then they're not a real church, so they should teach it for that. And if they rebel against the government, their congregation needs to know why. Mm -hmm. And now all of a sudden you're teaching theonomy? And I'm like, huh? What? The last time the cop said move away from the abortion clinic, you just submitted. You've never pushed back against them. Blah, blah, blah. No, it needs to be taught ahead of time. Yeah. They'll be like spanking your kid and you even tell them why. Like, well, 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 why? So, but the number one reason is that is that it's the acid test if someone's a fake pastor. Go to uh, Matthew um, 12, 30. And we think of this Matthew 12, 30 as an evangelism scripture, which it is, but it's not only an evangelism scripture. This is a theonomy scripture because theonomy has a lot to do with um, gathering <clears throat> for the kingdom of God. Brother Levi, read that. He that is not with me is against me, and he that gathereth not with me scattereth abroad. So two blanks there. Fake churches scatter. They scatter the flock. The shepherd gets smitten. The sheep scatter. The hireling fleeth when no man pursue. I'd call Biden a hireling. Who's he work for? Jewish bankers that print money. And, so fake churches scatter, and they are against who? James, read verse 30 again. Against me, against the Lord. Yes. He that is not with me, with my civil law system, with my don't submit to Caesar and pinch incense, don't submit to Biden and mandates, he that's not with me, is against me, the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth, the creator of life in the womb, the one that gives you air to breathe, they are against me. And I'm not done preaching to you, says Jesus. He that gathereth not with me scattereth abroad. You're preaching democracy in your church? You're preaching all, all are equal? Really? So I'm equal to a BLM and Tifa thug throwing bricks through the window? So the good housewife is equal to the whore? The baby killers, all are equal. My, my Bible says charge the heathen interest and don't charge the brethren interest. My Bible says you're the head and not the tail. A head and not the tail sure doesn't sound like equal to me. The, the fag's called a dog. And that's not equal to me. Jada doesn't get the same rights as my girls. My dog. All equal. Are you kidding me? All right. What? Closing, what are some simple test questions you could ask a pastor to see where he really stands on this subject? Can homeless be saved? Sorry. It can uh, homeless be saved? That'd be kind of a, that's uh, a yeah. more advanced one. Um, a simple, I wrote simple test questions. Simple would be uh, uh, the death penalty. Yes. I mean, that's the acid test, really. I mean, death penalty is a great, a great, great question. Yeah. What, else, what other question? Did you close in COVID? Mm -hmm. another, another question. By whose authority does the Supreme Court make laws? And if they flip-flop, are they really supreme? A supreme being doesn't make mistakes. Oh, yeah, I have slaves. Oh, no, no, no. We switched that law. Yeah. God doesn't make mistakes. He's supreme. He's perfect. He doesn't make any mistakes. Zero. Never has. Never will unchangeable his law is unchangeable he just he just fulfilled the ceremonial law through himself as jesus christ on the cross and got rid of that part his law didn't, didn't change right. like, no so why should we ask these people this when, when we meet these pastors once in a while and you'll meet them throughout your life but why should you ask them if they're a theonomist or not uh, well because Did, that i mean that causes issues down the road it does. If you're teaming, uh, not teaming up, but preaching with them, preaching with them, or later visiting their, meet, like, visiting their um, camp meeting, or bombs drop later. Yes, and then you find out the guy 
taking your resources, doing this and that. And when it comes to, yeah. you know, the real thing, he's turning, not turning, well, who are they going to turn us into? But, yeah. but doing things that can get someone else and who is yeah. truly saved, hurt, killed. Yeah. You know. You should ask him this. The Bible says uh, uh, the church in Ephesus, before they got rebuked, got a big compliment. Jesus said, yeah, you've tested those that say they're apostles and found them to be liars. Yeah. That was a compliment from Jesus. He's like, good job in testing those guys. That's great. Test them. So, of course, we test them on street preaching. Of course, we send them a YouTube street preach video and say, what do you think? And then we ask them, are you a theonomist? Should homos be put to death? Should baby killers, baby killing doctors be put to death? Well, why? Why not? What were the Puritans? What are the roots? We want to disciple the baby pastors that are actually saved out there. And there are very few of them. And you also want to make them manifest and show that they're an enemy of the cross, an enemy of you, quicker rather than later. And so they will come against you and they'll say things like, oh, you're turning the laws into um, a way of justification. No, no, sanctification. You will talk, under this discipleship for six months in this church, you'll talk at a higher level than their elders. You'll literally say to them, no, that's for justification, not sanctification. Ten-year-old, I thought I could do better than that than our elders. No, that's for this and that. Well, if the baby killer is not killed, then why do you, if someone killed your wife, sir, why would they get the death penalty? They wouldn't? Oh, wow, I didn't know you didn't love your wife, pastor. Call them out on their trash. you got to test these people. They're going to get deceived. Here's my story. Oh, and also, because if they're a baby Christian, if they're a baby pastor, they, they will grow. They will grow. So here's my story as a baby pastor. I forgot the word baby. You can write it in there and draw a baby if you want. I was a baby pastor, 2016. I was like, these homos need to be locked up for life. Get them off the streets. They're wicked. Lock them up. Lock them up. And a couple of people <laughs> told me, no, the Bible says execute them. And I was like, I don't know about that, man. And they took me to Romans 132. And, of course, it was good to go to Romans because in Leviticus, I was like, well, I mean, I'm not so sure. I mean, some... I know ceremonial, some parts are this and that, but right to Romans 132, and I read that about five times. I'm like, worthy of death, worthy of death, worthy of death. I was like, all right, well, they spiritually die and go to hell. I was like, well, Leviticus says worthy of death. And so as a baby pastor, when I was challenged on theonomy, because I actually was saved, I embraced it. I embraced it. And I read Rush Dooney's Institutes of Biblical Law. It's a good, thick, thousand-page book I recommend. And in there, I skipped right to the homo chapter. You had just gotten saved. It was January. I started reading that book. And right in the homo chapter, he broke it down why they need to be executed. I was like, well, this guy's respected. I mean, he's a cow. He's, but he's a big, thick book. I'm learning a lot from it. He's like, yeah, homo's be executed. There it is right there. Now, he's, he's weak on the lesbos. They need to be executed too. But the point is, is like, I, I grew. And I'd only been pastoring for four months. So that's why we ask. Any pastor, elder, deacon, like, well, what do you think of the enemy, man? Co-worker who says he's a Christian. What do you think, man? Well, well what should happen to the rapist or pedophile? Well, what is yours? your mom. So then what if it was my mom? Why did it make a difference who the victim is? So we make it, we make it kind of personal. Well, yeah, they've been put to death. The government should do that. Well, what happens if the government doesn't do its job? I don't know. What happens if your boss doesn't do the job? What happens if your pastor doesn't do the job? Uh, how about they get fired? <laughs> fire the, who can fire the pastor? Fire the government. Yeah, everybody just leave. Fire the government. Fire. Get somebody in there that does this. We have to test people. That's it. I'm done. Any co comments or questions down here? Yes. Um, where does, oh, what would you say to some people who say, well, that's just Old Testament. And yeah. And they throw it out. I just said, do you believe the words of Jesus? And they're going to say yes. And I'll say Matthew 5. He said he didn't come and do law. In Matthew 15, he, he said death penalty for incorrigible youth that spit on their parents or curse their parents or smack their parents, whatever. And so did Jesus lie in Matthew 15? Yeah. Very little defense, lots of offense. Did Jesus lie in Matthew 15? I thought you said you believed in the words of Jesus. Could it be that I'm giving you meat right now and you're just choking? Mm -hmm. You know, but hey, I love you, man. We'll be in front. We're in touch. We'll talk in a few weeks, you know. Try to, try to, you know, get that there. I mean, we don't always like rub it in their face or something. The Bible says knowledge puffs up, but love edifies. I'm like, okay, like I know more than you. And it's, well, I used to not know that. So I said that to her, man. I didn't used to know those either. 
I didn't know where I was supposed to write come. I read it myself. I would get rid of church. I didn't know about reprobate. I read it myself. I know about homos being put to death. I read it, I read it myself, man. The Bible says study not yourself, sir. Because they're professing, here's, here's why it's good to slow to judge. You're still going to judge. You are going to judge. Because you don't want to accidentally tell someone who's really your brother that he's going to hell and if he's not. So it's like, let's see where they line up on some things. And then as I push it a little harder and preach a little harder and ask about their mom or their wife, which I think is always great examples to you, you know, rape, kill, whatever, then what? And then why? And then how long should this trial go? Is God silent about civil or criminal law? And so, but Matthew 15 is my go-to right there. Yes. And uh, what, uh, what, when is the time, I'm trying to phrase it right because you've said it before and I want to make sure you cover it all the law changed at the resurrection right but let's say there are certain things in in the law such as polygamy yeah but it changed later yes and i believe you said before it is either um you know people say well it's not in the new testament yeah then the thing would be either if it's if god talks about it specifically yeah then it still stands. Yeah, the best way to explain it is the New Testament is an amendment to a contract. So your original contract stays unless the amendment modifies it. I'm buying this six acres. Oh, I didn't know about this issue. I want to amend the contract. The original stays the same. Meaning, everything in the Old Testament moves to the New unless it's specifically spoken against in the New. So polygamy is spoken against in the New. No women judges, no women leadership is spoken against in the new. It has amended the old, and it is better covenant. Not only because the Gentiles can come in, not only because you're saved by the blood of Jesus, and then you walk the straight and narrow. Back then, there was no blood of Jesus. They had to look forward to the blood of Jesus. They had to just walk straight and narrow, period. Mm -hmm. Okay? So there's all sorts of things that are better new, but the, 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 the main easiest way to break it down to somebody is say, does the New Testament condemn incest or bestiality? No, it doesn't. It doesn't condemn those. So what ground do you have to stand on against incest and bestiality? Because it's not condemned. See, their theology is that it better be speaking about the new or I ain't messing with it. I'm not touching with it. Well, those two slam them because you have to go to the old to condemn, obviously, people sleeping with dogs and incest. You have to go to the old. Proving my point. It's an amendment to a con. New Testament is an amendment to the con. So it, the old, it, it pulls forward. Because if you don't pull that forward, you're giving thumbs up to bestiality and incest. Not even mentioned, let alone death penalty. Not even mentioned as a sin. Not even mentioned. No, everything in the old stands unless the new abrogates it, which it does for food laws, ceremonial laws, jubilee laws, land laws, slavery laws. You know, in the Old Testament, they're born slaves. That's the spoils of their war. They're born slaves, three gener ten generations deep. It's a much culture again. Well, they're not born slaves in the New Testament. They can sell themselves into bond servant, you know, and, and work and stuff. But yeah, does that answer your question? Yeah. Um, no, we can go on. I don't care. And, and the last, uh, the last question I have is, what do you say to the people that say, well, Ten Commandments is the only law you should go by? Then, then I say, do, do they have statutes and judgments? How do you define to your kid, do the dishes before 9 p.m.? The 9 p.m. is a statute. Wipe the counter correctly or you're going to wipe it again. How do you define that? What is the punishment if he doesn't? Every law system, including democracy, Sharia law, biblical, everyone has statutes and judgments. So when you say only the Ten Commandments, I agree. Totally agree. We agree as a church, only Ten Commandments, which have statutes and judgments. Mm -hmm. One law is one God. The Lord our God is one. Then it comes down to love him, love your neighbors yourself. Then it comes down to Ten Commandments. You draw a big pyramid. Then it comes down to statutes, precepts, and judgments. You know, the guy with the ponytail doesn't 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 necessarily get put to death. I'm not the judge. If I was the judge and the cop, or I, that's not even a case for the judge. That's for the cop. Mm -hmm. Cop would go to him and be like, "Man, who's your daddy? Ain't got a daddy. You're a man. You're either under your dad and you're you're talking to them both, or you're out of the house and you're on your own." Man, your hair's past your shoulder. What is going on here? You've heard the whole standard, everything here. This is your one warning. I'm going to whoop you next time. Actually, I'll bring you to the judge and he'll whoop you. Mm -hmm. If you do it now, then that's good. But we'll cut that ponytail off. You're starting to look like a girl from behind. Mm -hmm. 
That's a very nice cop. Just come up, give him a nice warm letter. Comes up the second time. The cop, the cops are not whooping people. Very important to understand that. They're not allowed to whoop people or put the cuffs on tight. Okay? Everybody innocent until proven guilty. Bring him to the judge. Says this guy's been warm, this and that. How old are you? 16? I don't care. You live with that? No, I build my own my own tank with the whole thing. Okay, then I said, so you've been told this and that? All right, yeah, I whip him five times. Oh, you said one. No, the cop said one, but you didn't respond to it. Now you're getting whooped five. And if you're going to be an incorrigible criminal, I ever see again, you're put to death. God hates incorrigible criminals. Mm -hmm. You know? And so th there, there's a lot of grace there, and there, there is some leeway. And the, the, the problem in pietism is they think their laws must be implemented perfectly. Memorize this. The law will not be implemented perfectly. Because we're fallible. We make mistakes as, as, as dads, as pastors, as husbands, the judge, the thing. But there is limits on lashes, on death penalties, on warnings. It will not be implemented perfectly, but it will be implemented a million times better than any other law system. A million times better than any other law system. At all. You know? Um, and, and, and... There will be people that won't have to, there'll be elders, I mean, there'll be elders that won't have to um, work secular jobs 40 hours a week and this and that, that'll be in this word more than we've ever been in and praying and soliciting cases and growing in God's wisdom and growing in the knowledge of God. And if we've grown this much in six, six years, I could, just, I could just imagine if six years of theocracy, mm -hmm. stuff is going to get figured out. <laughs> Whose timetable is it on? When the judge decides, you don't have to stone everybody the same day. And be like, put them in the ward. Tell when. Until we get a verdict. <laughs> you know? I don't know how many times I'm going to whoop them. Put them in the ward. Bring them back at 5 o'clock. I'm going to pray about it at lunchtime. Honey, bring me some lunch. You know what? Don't count. Judge, don't counsel with your wife. <laughs> Just bring some lunch. Pray with me. Okay? They come back. Better. But it will not be implemented perfectly, and that's the problem with perfectionism. This, oh, it's not perfect. Throw it out. Well, either is there a democracy law system. Far from it. I can go on and on, but we're out of time. We're going to pray now. We can talk more at dinner if we need to.